Hello and welcome to a revision tutorial by Mr. McMillan Revise, making revision easier. Welcome to this series on Edexcel GCSE RS Unit 3.2 Matters of Life and Death. In this third video I'm going to look at the controversial issue of abortion. In this video we're going to look at three main areas. Firstly, what is abortion and what does the UK law say about it? Secondly, what are the moral arguments for and against abortion? And thirdly, what are the different Christian attitudes to abortion? Let's begin with the first question, what is abortion? Abortion is defined as the deliberate termination of a fetus. It describes a medical procedure in which a doctor intentionally brings about the ending of a pregnancy by ending the life of the fetus. So what does the law say about abortion? In the UK, a woman is legally allowed to have an abortion if two doctors agree that it can be justified under one of the seven possible grounds set out in the 1967 Abortion Act, which is when it was made legal. In the UK, there are approximately between 150 to 200,000 abortions each year. The vast majority of these, 98%, are conducted on grounds C which states that continuing with the pregnancy would involve a risk to the physical or mental health of the pregnant woman. Of the other 2% of abortions, the most common grounds used are grounds E, which is where there is a substantial risk that if a child were born, it would suffer from such physical or mental abnormalities as to be seriously handicapped. This is sometimes called fetal abnormality. Or under ground D, where there is a risk to the physical or mental health of any existing children or the family of the pregnant woman. Less than 0.1% of abortions in the UK are conducted to save the life of the pregnant woman. It is worth knowing these figures, as some previous exam questions have focused on whether there are too many abortions, or whether in fact the law on abortion needs to change. For example, in the 2011 paper, question 3D gave the statement, the law on abortion should be changed. Having established what abortion is, what are the moral arguments in favour and against abortion? Abortion is a very controversial and sensitive topic. In countries like the USA and Ireland, it has generated significant political attention and strongly held views on both sides. Those who are against abortion are called pro-life, as they emphasise the right to life of the unborn child. They tend to argue for a complete ban on abortion, or for stricter rules on when abortions can happen. Those in favour of abortion laws are called pro-choice, as they emphasise the right of the pregnant woman to choose what happens to her body and they campaign for abortion to be accessible to all women. Let's look in more detail at the arguments given by those who are pro-life. Abortion kills children is a popular pro-life banner at protests in the USA. It sums up perhaps the most simplest but most fundamental objection of the pro-life movement. Put simply, if you believe that the fetus should be treated as a human being, then to deliberately end the life of an innocent human being is murder. This first argument is built upon the belief that life begins at conception. Those who accept this view believe that from the moment of fertilization, the embryo or fetus has the same rights as any human being and their life should be protected. Many pro-life supporters argue that relaxed abortion laws allow too many people to use abortion as a form of late contraception. They argue that society should be encouraging people to be more responsible in their choices regarding sexual behavior rather than relying on abortion to deal with any unwanted pregnancies. Also, some people believe that the current laws that allow abortion in the case of fetal abnormality are effectively discriminatory against people with disabilities and that they devalue the lives of those living with disabilities. Finally, there are alternatives such as adoption that would be better solutions for a pregnant woman who cannot look after her child. Now we turn our attention to the argument used by those who are pro-choice. My body, my choice is a common pro-choice banner which gets to the central pro-choice argument. It emphasizes that it is the right of a pregnant woman to choose what she does with her body. Some say abortion is a medical issue to be decided between a woman and her doctor. It should not be a political decision at the control of the government. Even if abortion is illegal, desperate people will take desperate measures. The UK Abortion Act was brought in in part to stop women dying at backstreet abortionists. In countries where abortion is illegal, it is still possible for women to die from abortions that go wrong. Some argue that the fetus cannot be considered a full individual and therefore be given full legal protection until it reaches viability. 
This is the point at which it has a significant chance of surviving outside the womb. This is why in the majority of abortions that take place in the UK, they must take place before the 24th week of pregnancy, since this is deemed to be the point of viability. Finally, some pro-choice supporters take a utilitarian approach, arguing that in some cases, an abortion is the lesser of two evils, and overall having an abortion is not as bad as not having the abortion. So what do Christians make of these moral arguments? Broadly speaking, most Christians can be grouped into either the pro-life or pro-choice categories. Catholics and Evangelical Christians fit into the pro-life category. They may well agree with many of the pro-life moral arguments I previously mentioned. In addition, from a Christian perspective, they would add that the Bible teaches us the principle of the sanctity of life. This is based on, among other things, the Genesis creation accounts in which humans are made in the image of God, and therefore all human life is sacred and to be protected. Furthermore, they argue that the Bible clearly teaches that life begins in the womb at conception. For example, Psalm 139 talks about being formed in the mother's womb. And in the Gospel, it describes Elizabeth's unborn child, John the Baptist, leaping in her womb with joy when she heard Mary was pregnant. Furthermore, the Ten Commandments make it clear that taking innocent life is wrong. Ultimately, Catholics and Evangelicals would emphasize that Christianity teaches that God is the Lord of life and is the only one able to give and take away life. On the other hand, some Christians, particularly liberal Protestant Christians, fit into the pro-choice category. Although they are in favor of abortion, they do tend to want to reduce the circumstances in which abortions take place. An example of a liberal Protestant Christian would be American President Barack Obama, who says that abortion should be reduced through good sex education and good welfare support, but that ultimately women should have the choice whether to have an abortion or not. In the Gospels, Jesus taught us to love our neighbor, and so it may be the case that in some circumstances, allowing an abortion is the most loving thing to do, rather than allowing the pregnancy to continue. Thanks for watching, I've been Mr. McMillan. That's the end of part three. For the other parts, click the links. If you have found this useful, please give this video a thumbs up and follow me on Twitter. You can also download an audio version of this video from iTunes so that you can listen to it on your MP3 device.